are you? So far, so good. Thanks, God. So working hard as all the teachers all over the world. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Tito, um, how has how is it going? How is it going? Yeah, good. Trying to find a little peace here and there, you know, but uh, we just got to keep up, got to keep up. And ready for tonight's session, of course, uh, I thank you for uh, the opportunity to be in this session and uh, let's see what we can share. I know that there's a lot of people asking, they want to know about these topics, so that's what I'm here for. Absolutely, Tito, that's the idea. So the importance of B2 for EFL teachers is a very interesting topic that all EFL community, even public and private teachers, notice that it is very important for their personal development. I remember in one occasion when we talked together, uh, we were mentioning about uh, a positive the advantages and also we, the disadvantages we have when we we take the B2 in a specific time, but then it comes late, and then we we don't we don't prepare more and more. So it it is like a lack of the the the, the, te the teachers uh, the teachers are affected to the to this uh, uh, lack of practice. No, so tonight you are going to talk about that. No, that's true, uh, and I'm sure that many of you will agree with me that. If you stop practicing something that at one moment you dominated, it will go away. Uh, that's why uh, there's a saying that goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so, because many of us, we usually uh, are sent to teach some specific levels. And after so many years, it's like you, 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 you become that level. Because for some reason, they already have everything they needed. They stop practicing, they just focus on the level that they're teaching and what happens later. Boom. You lost in some way your proficiency or your, your fluency. So, and that happens to all of us. Aren't we all, um, uh, we have English as a foreign language. So, if you don't use it, oh yes, we're going to lose it. So, in that case, instead of losing it, if we practice it on a daily basis, we make it a convention of our daily uh, activities. Uh, for sure, it's not that we're going to not only maintain it, but we will raise it up. Definitely, uh, Tito, I agree with you. So, mm -hmm. absolutely, uh, the idea of preparing is because you need to rise to rise up your level of or English. Now, linguistic competence lose at when you when you are not permanently... Uh, work, no, especially in when you are interacting with the language, particularly with the with the students, no, because sometimes we can work in different um, levels, okay, in different positions. But uh, what's wrong? The problem is when you when you are not using those um, linguistic skills and predominant, uh, and you can't. Um, well, well, how to improve, no? Your students challenge you, so there's an improvement for your side, no? That's the point, no? What do you think about that, Elizabeth, about this topic, the importance of B2? Uh, I totally agree. So we have, um, we need to be aware that our profession is managing our, the linguistic competence in the, in, in a, in the best way because it's part of our profession. So I always say that professional uh, growth is a personal responsibility. So uh, one of the things that we need to change a little bit is the fact that we are always waiting for someone else externally to take actions for what we really need professionally speaking. So, and I would say that in, in when we talk about professional development, it's a personal responsibility and, and uh, thanks God I would say that there is a strong community of English teachers and it's a good opportunity to to get together and grow together. So, and definitely, so I agree with Tito in the fact that we, if we don't use it, you lose it. So we always say that in our training sessions, but uh, this is a must uh, in our profession, definitely. And it's time to be accountable for it. I mean, we as Ecuadorians, we need to really open up our eyes and see that we have talent inside the country and that we together we can help each other 
rise up. I mean, as Elizabeth said, I mean, we should never, I mean, we should stop. We must stop thinking that there's going to be a miracle falling on us and boom, we all have our certificates. We all speak a C1 level. That's not going to happen. We have to make it happen. Yeah, sure. So, uh, teachers' comments are also important because they, I know some of them, they also experience with the B2. And also, there are some other teachers that they are in the process of getting the B2. So, that's very important that they hear this um, transmission, okay? And I know that other, other teachers, okay, they are about to get the C1, which also is important. Now, so, uh, um, Tito, the same. What do you think about uh, when you have this the B two, but now you are on the you are on the way to get the C one? Is similar the way the number of hours you need to 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 fulfill this achievement, or there were some other kind of differences? What do you think about that? Well, based on the common European frameworks, they uh, they have a standard that you require at least two hundred hours of instruction. Uh, however we all here i'm sure you all will agree because most of us are teachers we know that wishing or seeing an objective that needs to be fulfilled is not enough it requires our motivation our reason our desire to achieve one so um if that is affected in some way or some level of course, you're not going to reach that in 200 hours. In some other cases, you might make it a habit, you might make it a daily activity to use the language, to practice the language, to read a novel, to watch movies and stuff. Probably you're going to achieve that even in less time, uh, lesser time. Yeah, thanks, Tito, because, it, well, we aren't talking about like an introduction because we have the rest of the transmission to start this uh, explanation about the B2. So, welcome to everybody. Welcome, teachers. Hello, Tom Collins. Thanks for coming. Uh, Miss Tenma. Hello. Hello. Emilio. Yeah. Victoria. Hello. 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 Carlos Moyano. Uh, Christopher. Hello. Lourdes. Hello, everybody. Marta. And Hello. Welcome. How are you? Okay, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to the transmission, okay, that every Saturday I try to invite you, okay? Uh, <laughs> hello, Stephanie, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> okay, you are a very faithful, uh, you are a very faithful person to come to these transmissions, okay? Thanks. Thank you. So, I think we're going to start now, but first of all, let me introduce to our special speaker, no? Tonight, we have the topic, the importance of B2 for EFL teachers. So, we have now the participation of Mr. Tito Hidalgo. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet Tito when he when he was working in Copay, and he has a lot of experience training uh, English teachers. So, uh, I know, I know who is, who is Tito, so he is, he will be a trainer who can share the experience with us. So, you as participants, please, I ask you to have mute your microphone right now. And then when you, your interaction comes after, you can speak, make questions by making questions, or you can, you can use the chat by texting the questions. And I can read for, for our speaker. Okay, so I have your collaboration uh, uh, participants So, in order to start. So, Tito. We like it to start it, no? Thank you, thank you. Uh, and again, um, Andres, thanks for the opportunity to take place in this session. And uh, I prepared a, a short uh, presentation that I like to share with uh, all the participants. Uh, it's kind of a story that, in, you know, I believe that in order for us to go after what we need or what we want, we need to constantly refresh our memory on what that point is, why we're doing it. The why is important. And so let me share, um, Bahina, um, I believe that by understanding where all this is taking us, 
I think we might find within us uh, um, one more reason to go after, mm -hmm. in this case, the certification. I know a lot of them uh, have given up and are even willing to, uh, to drop whatever they're doing because uh, they don't find ways to get it. But I think uh, through this, I, uh, we hope to provoke that desire, that, that wish to go after that. Meantime, more and more people are joining us. Uh, that's good. If you have any questions, uh, so that we uh, keep the uh, conversation going, we need to take advantage when we have this group of uh, selected people. Would you like to ask uh, anything? They also want to be part of that economic growth as a country, as its people. Uh, and I'm sure that that's one of the reasons why uh, at one point standards were set, especially for us teachers who teach English. And we know this because we teach English, but I'm sure that there are other uh, professions that uh, have their own requirements. And, and so that's why certifications are needed in order for us to, uh, to teach. And of course, how could you teach if your level is not high enough? Especially now, there uh, the standards for bachillerato students, for high school graduates, they must have a B1 as a next uh, level. And of course, the teaching must be higher than that. So, uh, as you know, in the intention, in the intention, our government has set some standards for us teachers to have uh, a level in order to teach. And so that's the reason why we teachers, we as teachers need to be, need to have clarity on that. This is not something uh, for us as a teacher, but this spreads our action affects on the people around us. We as professionals, our students, our communities, and uh, bringing it down to English, we know that English proficiency is essential for international collaboration and success. Again, for relation education and economic growth. We also know that more people around the world than ever before is studying and learning English because it has become the international language of education and business. We know that there have been a uh, few evaluations to our teachers and the scores have not been that motivating. At one point, only 10% were able to score a B2 and only four in the country got a C1. Uh, and still, we were the lowest in the region to, to, to have. And so we know our problem. We need to start we need to start demonstrating, we as teachers, that we can do this on our own. As uh, we were talking at the beginning, there's, there's not going to be a miracle falling on us. We need to start working on it now. And as you know, as English teachers, you know that English is not something that you practice like mass, like a addition, you prepare tonight and then tomorrow you take the test and you're all fine. No, this, you need to start working now. And so, um, the Ministry of Education has approved some example, some exams for teachers to have a uh, some options. And I put together a graph uh, for that, but uh, I believe I'm not going to be able to do that. And so we have. We have the ECCE, we have the TOEIC, we have the TOEFL IBT, we have the ITAP, we have the PTE, we have the Cambridge uh, exams and the APTES, and we also have some other that I cannot see right now. And so these tests, they all fulfill one specific thing. They all have one thing that is to certify 
your level. Of course, we have some tests that are proficiency tests, there are others that are level tests. Some might be easier to achieve because, oh, you're only going to take the test one level, so there won't be other questions about that level, such as the Cambridge FCE or the other, or the PTE general. But there are also proficiency tests such as the TOEFL IBT, the TOEIC, the PTE Academic, and uh, the ITAP, which they're all proficiency tests. <laughs> You just start answering questions, and based on the right ones, you are placed on one of the bands of the common European framework levels or bands, as I said before. They all have different prices, and they all have their own objectives. Some of them are academic, which require uh, they go beyond just language for communication, while there are others just for social communication such as the uh, PTE general, the, the ITAP example. There are others that are more like for, for um, work, work-related objectives, and others academic, such as the TOEFL IBT. They have also um, they have different fees and stuff. And so, but what matters here is that we need to stop shooting ourselves on the foot. We need to start working on it now. Um, so if you have any questions, please, uh, uh, we may start with the questions. Andres. OK. Um, teachers, you have any questions about the what what Mr. Tito has really introduced now? Um, yes, um, me. I have a question, Andres. Okay, Miss Erica, thank you. What um, What is your question? Okay, the thing is that um, I want to know the, the main characteristics or differences between uh, getting a C1 um, between getting uh, getting the TOEFL or the IELTS exam, the main difference it is between maybe that one of them it is the American English and, and the other one is the British one. But uh, which one is the best for us as English teachers in Ecuador? Well, it's not which one is uh, is better for us in Ecuador. If they're within the requirements of the Ministry of Education you may take either one. Now, it is it is important for all of us to understand that there is no such thing as British, uh, North American, or uh, English. Now, all the tests have a combination of the accents. And so I'm sure that that's gonna help you uh, lower your anxiety about the test. So, uh, while one test is for academic purposes, the other one is for work-related purposes, purposes. And so, of course, the academic is going to request you perhaps uh, some more challenging tasks for you to do, such as listen to this dialogue, then read this article, and based on those two points, you make your own conclusions and explain your conclusions. One on the other ones, you just uh, requested to uh, uh, give your opinion about one, one, about one specific thing. And of course, every level, it requires the levels based on the common European frameworks. If, if, you, if you happen to see the descriptors, they're very clear on what each of them requests from the speaker. <laughs> Okay. okay, thank you so much for the information. But yes, I think it will be a, a great idea to get, in this case, IELTS for academic purposes, right? Yes, there are other... Um, I, I do recommend you, just like we request our students, do your homework, check out the different exams and their purposes and try them out perhaps by the time you try them out each of them out you might be even ready to take 
any of them because they all have something in common. Example, the Pearson, the Pearson uh, uh, PTE no. general example, it has a section of dictation which I loved when I used to do that one. And so uh, I think that's one particular thing that is positive. Well, there are others that all uh, that follow. There are many others that follow the same pattern. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I have another question. Um, this is according to the um, to the preparation. Uh, it is possible to have, uh, you know, personal preparation, or we must um, get um, you know, uh, any kind of training or getting an extra course. What is your suggestion in this case? My best suggestions, and I'm sure that many of you will agree is to begin by taking uh, a diagnostic test. We need to know exactly where you're at at this okay. moment so that we can set point A and from point A plan your trip or your journey to point B. Uh -huh. If you find yourself in a B2+, plus, then, um, then the, the time for you to reach your C1 obviously is going to be reduced. Uh, in some cases, depending on the time that you have available to reach to that point, uh, might be considerable, and you might even just set set, set your ob an objective from this day on, just to practice and have and have formal conversation with your friends. Start writing here and there, and maybe by the time, let's say by the end of the year, you might be ready without even going to formal training. However, those who do not know exactly how to follow that, that's where uh, some of uh, some teacher trainers such as Andres or me or Elizabeth can uh, help out. Me too. At this moment, you can use the, um, uh, the share screen. I do. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, that was it. I already went through the story. <laughs> okay, so that's me right there. And I say that we must operate and respond according to the needs and wants of the context. I say needs and wants because that's reality. Just like, a, like in business, the market, we need to consider the needs and wants. And it's simple as that. We need to prepare. We need to be prepared. Andres, remember I told you that sometimes we train martial arts because we want to feel fit, but we hope that we never have to use that that we learned. We just got to be prepared. It's like when you also take a course on first aid, when you, just in case you need to uh, participate in an emergency and you can help out by uh, a person with a broken leg or an open wound and stuff. And so, but you all, you prepare, but you hope you don't have to use it. So even though we're employed, that doesn't mean we should stop preparing ourselves or continue polishing our, uh, our skills or knowledge. We need to always continue working on our professional development. And, and so that we can be part of a successful future. But... This successful future is not created just, it's not something that falls, as I said before, but it's something that is created by you, by me, and by every single member of our community of English teaching. Because the world is changing, as I said before. The world has changed in many ways. The way we communicate, the way we travel geographically too. We're having a lot of earthquakes and, and the volcanoes are erupting and stuff. And so we need to we need to be flexible. Like we say uh, in neurolinguistic programming, you have to be <coughs> you have to have behavioral flexibility so that you adapt according to the changes. Nowadays, and I'm sure that many of you will agree, it's not just enough to be an English teacher. You need to have some other skills. Like in my case, uh, I love neuro linguistic programming because it, 
it, it taps on psychological uh, issues such as how people learn and how people and why people behave the way they do and what really gets their attention so that once I get their attention, boom, I can contribute to their uh, knowledge or skills development. And so the third rock in general is changing. And so we know that, as I said before, many countries know that. <clears throat> they know that education correlates or it's connected to economic growth. And that's where our country wants to get. Many people know this. Look at Wendy Coke. She's an educator. Maybe you don't know her. But she said education is the most powerful tool countries have for boosting economic growth. Not only her, but come on, Paulo Filipe. There's a Brazilian, uh, he's a theorist and uh, great. I read one of his books. Also, Nelson Mandela, but also Shakira. I love this quote because it's clear. It says, education affects every major challenge we face in society. It creates economic growth, paves the way for peace and stability, and it helps erase the legacy of marginalization. I'm sure you guys will agree with that. And that is the big picture. That's, that, that's what teachers need to see. It, this goes beyond just me getting a certificate. Or you, of course. In this case, we know that English proficiency is essential for international collaboration. And the global economy, again, the correlation or the, or the connection between education and economic growth. More people around the world than ever before studying and learning English because it has become the international language of education and business, said by ETS. And so, as I said before, we need clarity. We need to know why we're doing this. This is not just because, oh, my employer is requesting that. I don't think I did it. But if we see that there's beyond that purpose, that we're contributing to, uh, to a bigger cause, perhaps we will find within us a better reason to really go after that. We're teacher guys. We're teachers. And so the same way we demand from our students, pay attention, go after what, you, what, what, what you're supposed to go after, then we need to set that example. We need to be a role model. Look at that. In the last uh, proficiency index from EF that it does every year, I'm sure um, some of you know them, we are in place 81. Muy bajo. And... Y por región tenemos a Guayas y a Pichincha, Loja y a Suay arriba. Aún así, we're still low. And so in the last, uh, in one of the results, after an evaluation to most of our teachers, this is what I was telling you earlier, C1, only five in the country. B2, 2,715 out of 9,624. And then the rest below that. So we do have a problem, and it concerns all of us. And it's not only Ecuador, guys. It's not only Ecuador. Other countries are joining in in this competition. Remember, we usually want to, nos queremos codiar con los exitosos. The same is with the countries. Countries usually do business with other countries that find a way to get to the same level of education and economic growth. That way, people no longer will want to leave our country, but stay here. And so the statistics say that. And we hear a bunch of things every day. Teachers are low in English, so our students are the same and so on and so on. So we need to go after the standards that the same Ministry of Education has set. Now I know that you guys or some of the teachers or most of the teachers need to present an updated version of their certification of the B2 and those who haven't got it, they need to get it. Now, if I'm wrong, correct me. But yes, 
we have the EC, the ECCE, the PTE, the APTIS, the TOEFL, the Cambridge, the TOEIC, and the ITEP, which is one of the last, the latest exam or the last exam uh, added to the list. Why? Because it's friendlier. Now, and we know that these tests. Am I covering some of the screen with the picture with, with, with the camera? Just well, anyways, the TOEFL, as you know, is 205. It takes uh, two weeks to get the results, approximately, and it lasts two years. If you have any questions, take notes. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I finish with this. The toy, it takes three weeks for the results. It takes uh, uh, 175 minutes for you to finish the test and evaluate, evalu it evaluates all the tests. The writing and the speaking section is done computer or by computer, but the rest of it, of it it's uh, on paper. And this is usually for work-related uh, purposes. <clears throat> We have the ECCE, it's a, also uh, 165 minutes. It evaluates all the skills, $170. The, the speaking part is face-to-face, -face, and this one is valid for life. The ITEP, it takes only 90 minutes. You have the results in 24 hours. It evaluates all the skills. The, the fee is 150 the speaking part is online and it lasts two years. I'm sure some of you are going to ask, what about validity? Why some for life and why some are not? And the ITEP is on demand. That means you take it the day you set. You don't have to wait for, a, for an official day. PTA, it's, a, it's another one that is um, um, user friendly. It's rather social issues rather than academic. This one is on paper and you have to wait for official dates. It's 120 to 180, it depends where you take it. And it also evaluates all the skills. The Ministry of Education has said that. And of course, you need to know that the teacher is proficient in every single ability. And so we have the Cambridge that most of you know. This one has no expression. This one is a level it's a level test so that means you only need to certify the b2 that's the level you're going to certify and so we have a bunch uh, uh set this comparison uh chart so as i said before we need to stop shooting ourselves on our foot we need to start working on it and now because as you know as you can see an individual's english level is a complex and subtle thing an effective English language assessment is able to differentiate between English speakers of a slightly different ability. In addition, an English assessment tool should provide the test taker with a detailed feedback. Knowing one's strengths and weaknesses can be quite useful in the language acquisition process. So, it is necessary for us to count with the results to know exactly where you are now so that we can from there plan how to get you to the next step. Um, and so, um, we, need to, we need to start working on that as soon as possible, especially those who have struggled for a while in order to, uh, not only to get a certification, but raise their proficiency level. Many teachers will call me, and when I say many, may, maybe um, I've been limited, but a bunch of teachers usually call me, and you know what? They expect results. They think that, it's that, that English learning acquisition is something that we placed in their minds, and poof, they say, okay, so uh, it's October. I got my certification. That doesn't happen that way. We're teachers and we know that. That's the same thing that happens inside the classroom. We need to motivate the students in that case because they're underage. They need to be motivated in order for them to practice and, and through the practice, meaningful practice, they can get, uh, they can develop their level. Of 
Any question? Good evening. I have one question for you, Tito. Stephanie, sure, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, my question is the next. The international um, examination expired. So um, the minister doesn't know for this part if I need to uh, get in the same exam in two, three, or five years. I don't know, you know, about the expiration about the test because I get a B2 with a test. So, um, my, 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 get, my, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I am so, so gracious. My, um, I confuse my mind. So, um, my <laughs> boss, Say me that I need to get the same examination, but no aptis. I need to get the FCE. What happened with the difference with the FCE with the aptis? And um, what is the examination inspired? I'm gonna give you my personal ex my personal opinion about that. Um. So we know the, the resolution ministerial. Um, that has a list that has a list of exams. So if you're complying with the law, hey, you can take any other test and present that and that should be accepted. That's my personal opinion. I have no idea why some institutions for some reason, they have they, they have decided that in our institution only this one is a, is allowed to enter this institution. We only accept this certificate. No, if you have any of the certificates, it should be freely accepted because you're complying with what the resolution says. Period. Now, with regard to validate validity or expiration time, that is usually set by the institution. Uh, okay. institutions usually said that for two years, especially proficiency tests, mm -hmm. which are usually accepted for academic purposes, those that are accepted for work related issues, they usually are for life. Now, where are you? We're employers, employees, but we're also academics. So in that case, based on a research I did about a year ago, I noticed that most institutions are the ones that set the time. Even if you take a certificate that is for life, they will say, I'm sorry, we need a test that is no, uh, that is no, is no more than two years old, period. Even, even uh, I searched some institutions in, 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 in Europe that said, okay, we will take an official standard test in situ. So even if you have a Cambridge certificate, which is for life, uh, if you go there, they're gonna tell you, no, no, we, we're not gonna accept that. We're gonna take one right now. So that's what I can say about expiration date. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, Tito, sorry. Let me ask some couple of questions from the chat. No, um, um, Angelica Naranjo, she's asking about, do you think self preparation is enough or do people need to look for an institute or personal trainer? What can we add for that question, Tito? Uh, we need to, you, you need to go in, inside and, and kind of analyze what's the best way you learn. Uh, and go for that. In my case, Tito Hidalgo, at one point in my life, I decided that I needed to fulfill many roles in my life. I had to be a father. I had to be a partner for my wife. I had to be a man, uh, a provider. So I needed to work in everything. But I noticed that we were 
we were we, we were getting competition of other individuals with two degrees with two master's degree and i said no 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 i need to keep going and so i decided to be flexible and start learning to learn on my own and so now i get my hands on whatever program or book and Dito won't stop. So you need to go inside and find out what's your best way and go for that. But remember that not always we can achieve success in isolation. We always need a tap or a pat on the back. So that's why, as I said, Andres or I or Elizabeth, experienced coaches, we can help you out. Thank you so much. And um, well, somebody else would like to ask any questions for this topic? If you allow me to, to point out in two comments based on what Tito just said. So the first one is that we need to be aware that reaching the V2 level or reaching the, v, the C1 level or any level that uh, we, we have in our goals and we have in mind is a process. The first thing is, is a process. And the second thing, in this process, there are two specific moments. The first one is reaching our linguistic competence, but not, uh, not that linguistic competence that comes from uh, um, the sense that we want to reach that uh, B2 level just for mere communication. So reaching uh, in this process, in this way, in uh, these different stages that we follow also involves developing our critical thinking skills that are going to be needed for the second for the second moment and also learning about the culture so and how to manage our thoughts how to organize our ideas it's going to be very helpful in the second part of uh, in the second moment that is learning about the mechanics of any test that we want to take so, and I have uh, talked with some teachers and they send some messages and says, okay, I need to, to reach my B2 level. And, and what happens is that they are not even at that, they are not ready for taking that exam because they haven't even started with the first moment. And the first moment is the start of developing your language competences and your thinking skills because you are going to need that for the second stage that is learning about the mechanics of any test, any standard test. So that will be my only comment, Andres. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. <laughs> and one there is pragmatics. And they need to uh, work on that also. Because as you, uh, as you start reaching higher levels, that is a must. Tito, I have a question. Okay, um, well, according to the According to the, the experienced trainers, they mentioned that it's in, before we before we start you no know, a certification uh, exam. Okay, it's very important to start with a diagnostic placement test, no, at the placement test in order to detect our strengths and what we need to improve. All right, for example, what do you recommend in case someone, okay? A person who takes an, a placement test, and in this placement test, the results are that the person has a good had a, has a good speaking, but need to train more on listening, reading. But the writing is acceptable, quite acceptable. What is more important to focus on the strengths, whether when I'm really good at, or I need to focus more on my needs? So, what is the balance? What is the equilibrium I need to focus more in that part? Well, well, the thing is that, uh, Andres, we all work with human beings. And as a coach, uh, we first evaluate teachers to see how they handle the evaluation process. But then we still need to go through that other stage, which is an interview, so that we kind of get to know the student, how they see the learning process. And from there, we take we, we, we decide uh, how to tackle it. That is, as you said, should I go for the weaknesses or should I use the strength to, to uh, clear out the weaknesses? So every case is, uh, is different. However, when you get a whole group, then you 
know, we, we, we will burn some neurons trying to figure out how to work with the whole group. But then once you have set the grounds to start working with them, then you just go right ahead. But that's my best answer. Yes, sometimes you need to work on their weaknesses or sometimes you just work on their strength. I usually like to work on their strength because it's easier. Okay. That exactly, Tito, that I was asking for. Thank you. Sure. Any other oh, question? Somebody else? Carmen, Erika, Carmita, Mario, Carlos, Paulina. There's so many. All so, that. okay. Uh, hello, Tito. So, uh, one thing that I was um, thinking about was uh, similar to what Andres asked you. You know, if we have, yeah, if uh, we, we obviously we have a lot of weaknesses and also strengths. And most of the time, uh, I, I think, I don't know if, if it has happened to most of the teachers here, to the colleagues that I can see, uh, probably the hardest ones or the hardest skills are the listening and also writing. Yep. And uh, uh, we have had the opportunity to take the FC test and uh, probably the listening is one of the hardest in my very personal point of view. And also writing and uh, personally uh, speaking, I consider that if we have if we have um, a lot of uh, difficulties in, for example, in listening and in writing, we must uh, keep on uh, practicing those ones. And obviously we are going to improve because if we, if we have a good level in uh, reading or use of English or those things, probably we have to try the ones that uh, are uh, a trouble for us. So that's my opinion. Uh, do you agree with me or not? Do you agree that we have to to practice the ones that uh, we are not really good at? Oh, definitely. Definitely. If you're going to work on your own, my best suggestion is always to start with what is easier. Uh, and, and, and the other, and then the second one that you might place um, as a second, you might try to create an environment where you are exposed to it on a daily basis. One, one recommendation that I can give you is to start uh, canceling out or deleting or replacing or renaming this is difficult. Because that usually might be uh, an anchor that is limiting uh, that that he, with your unconsciousness right away it creates like a barrier says okay this is listening <laughs> no rather play play English music watch movies in English uh, of course don't watch Jane Eyre the old version because that's <laughs> that's an English very very strong classic English you don't want to watch that one uh, and so so that he becomes part of you until you get to the point to start working really on that. Okay. Because that's where we are. It's where we are exposed to. Yeah. Uh, 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 and I always ask, go for what is easy first, and then until you really end, then you go for what is mm -hmm. difficult. But then when it's difficult, no, you set, you set the purpose or the objective, and you go, no, you're mine now. This is my turn. I'm going to win this time and go for it. I found myself about, um, that would be uh, six years ago when I was doing, when I was doing, uh, I was in a master's program and I had to go through the module of education, uh, Estadistica Educativa. Okay. I'm not good with math. I'm not good with math. How could I be good with <laughs> statistics? So, uh, perhaps some reading, I dedicated one hour working on that, but in statistic, I had to carry the book everywhere I went, even before I went to sleep. 
But you know what I said? I said, no, I'm going to eat you alive because you're mine now. So instead of instead of the subject being the 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 uh, el, el animal que me iba a comer a mí, I said no. This is my turn, and I'm gonna get you. And that's the attitude we need to set. Either even if it is listening or, or I'm gonna get my C1, and I'm going to celebrate it. Period. Great. Mm -hmm. So it it's such an interesting point of view okay thanks thanks Tito. sure andres it has been a great session thank you very much uh, it's always great for for me to uh share my uh, how i feel about what i do you know? <laughs> yeah so well colleagues so before we are going to conclude this uh, transmission, let me, okay, let me give the, the brief, very brief part of this uh, B2 preparation. So you can work in your own, okay, and your own pace, you need to work at home, so to prepare yourself. Um, online groups, there are so many here, you know, that we can use um, technology in order to prepare in our own pace. For example, I think a good option can be for speaking uh, WhatsApp groups. Okay, many people create WhatsApp groups uh, for speaking English. So I I also just did experiment once when I created a, a question for a specific date and people start debating, asking, answering the questions. And it was good because uh, some teachers were speaking, producing language and they, and some others were improving from the ones who speak who speaks much better. So... It's a good try. And the rest of the skills, as Tito said, try to use to, for example, for improving listening, we can do it at home, listening to um, the broadcast, radio, internet, uh, um, TV programs, Netflix, Netflix, okay? And there are so many. So anyway, thanks for coming to this important transmission. Thanks, Tito, for your uh, presentation, which is very important and relevant. Elizabeth, it's a honor to see you here, to share your experience. And you all, guys, teachers, thanks for coming. Um, just want to say something, okay? Uh, teachers, um, uh, Andres Rodriguez, English coach, this is the name of this transmission, okay? So uh, take, take in context, take in part that we are contributing to an EFL um, um, field, okay? like you teachers like you that you want to improve and you want to get no more information so this is what i'm trying to do so let me know if you need something on a specific topic and i can invite someone to present so we are working in order to contribute it for you okay so guys thanks so it was a pleasure thank to you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A big turn home. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. 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 Que dejaste de ver, que sí, que no, que no es bueno. Ahora lo mismo. Thank you a lot, Andrés. Thank you so much.